What's going on, YouTube? And welcome back to Stein's Gate. In the last episode, we learned about CERN's deep, dark secrets that they're hiding from the world. And now we're waiting to hear back from John Titer about a mysterious program that's possibly only translatable by an IBM 5100 computer. Though it's only been a few minute, it, minutes, it feels like an eternity to me. It's here! Got mail. I quickly opened the mail. He didn't even let me push a button that time. From John Titor. Where did you find that? That's written in a proprietary IBM programming language used prior to 1975. You can only decipher it with an IBM 5100. Duh. And its contents are enough to raise goosebumps on my entire body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just as I suspected. Huh? I was right, Daru. I know where that data comes from. And IBM 5100! That retro PC has a certain special function. In fact, for more than 25 years after it went to market in 1975, Nobody knew of it save a few IBM engineers. That function was first brought to light by John Titor when he appeared in 2000. A while after Titor posted about it, the actual, an actual IBM engineer admitted to the hidden function's existence. Which reminds me, I talked to Suzuha about this only yesterday. Also decipher IBM's proprietary programming language which was written for APL and widespread. Isn't that surprising? Now it's a dead programming language that's only decipherable with an IBM 5100. What an incredible coincidence. A prime example of synchronicity at work. I don't think that word means what you think it means. A meaningful coincidence. Simultaneous. It's not a coincidence. I firmly believe that this is... This is all a ploy. It's almost like an almighty will is pulling the strings. <laughs> no, no. I say... This discovery of ours was inevitable from the start, for this is the choice of Stein's Gate. Wait, so CERN has an IBM 5100 database? Those machines aren't compatible with any modern software. Why would they do something like that? Answer me this, what is the best way to secure a machine against external cracking? Well, make it standalone, of course. Daru quickly catches on to the intent of my question. If only IBM 5100 didn't then I guess that's kind of standalone. Which means that CERN's keeping their most important secrets hidden there. How do you know about that hidden function anyway? It is recorded in my brain's extensive index laborum prohibitorum. Titer said it himself ten years ago, but Dara wouldn't believe me even if I told him the truth. Very original. I ignore Dara's retort. Mayuri! Mayuri, we have important matters to discuss. Assemble! Mayuri is sewing. She doesn't get off the sofa. It doesn't matter whether you can hear or not. This meeting concerns the fate of the future Gadget Laboratory. Nay, the fate of mankind. So I want to feel more secretive, like we're scheming or something. It's, it's important that we stare closely at the monitor and exchange dramatic lines. The atmosphere right now is too light. It's all my Yuri's fault. 
Listen, you two. Pets for the future gadget laboratory shall begin emergency top secret operations. This shall be the first stage in our war against the dark powers that manipulate the world from the shadows. Our enemy is CERN, a scientific institute engaged in the most evil research imaginable. Okay, you too loud, and I've been up all night. You still haven't let me sleep in the past 48 hours. I guess I am being too loud. We just had the whole issue of someone who could hear you. That kind of ruins the whole secret feeling. And the window's open, too. If Suzuha is down below, I'm sure she can hear everything. So I turn it down a notch. Understand, the world has no need for two mad scientists. Before they can get ahead of us, we must outwit them. Who are they? You know them. Oh, my Yushi doesn't get it at all. Basically, we must obtain the Phantom of the IBN 5100 is somewhere in Akiba. I make a magnificent declaration, but Daru just rubs his eyes and my Yuri returns to her needlework. Damn it, is there anything you guys react to? Lightning! We've uncovered a massive conspiracy here. How come you aren't excited? I'm looking for the server. That's true. Well, you're the only one who can do that, Daru, so I'll leave it to you. So, the IBN 5100 investigation squad shall consist of Mayuri and me. I can't! Mayuri makes an apologetic face. I have to make costumes, and I have work too. <laughs> Guess you're alone in this, Rintaro, buddy. Maybe you're, uh... I'm not gonna call her girlfriend, that's disrespectful to Kurisu. Maybe you can convince Kurisu to help you. So basically, you two are telling me this. I'm the only one with free time. Yes, because you do nothing with your life. Fine. I'll manage alone somehow. It's useless to try and stop me. Understood? Are you going to do something bad again? Nah, he's all talk. I leave my useless comrades behind and stride gallantly out of the lab. I step out onto the street. Immediately, a bicycle skids to a stop in front of me. Hi, Okabe Rintaro. Hiya, Okabe Rintaro. I always forget what voice you're supposed to have. Suzuha gets off her bicycle and gives me a strange greeting. I want to ask her, are you an American or something? But I'm distracted by her shiny bicycle. She's like a crow. Ooh, shiny. Except that's disrespectful to crows. It's the same bicycle that was in front of the Braun Tube workshop yesterday. I guess it belongs to her. She was the only one there. Connecting the dots for one slow, painful brain cell at a time. I wonder how much that set her back. I mean, it does look pretty expensive. Pretty nice technique there. You've never ridden a bicycle? So, bike no, you I had ridden a motorcycle before, though. Isn't that backwards? Weird girl. And what's with that flashy braking back there? I think it'd be pretty dangerous if she did that all through the town. Beginners get cocky and get into accidents. You see that pattern all the time. If you're going to go full speed, at least wear a helmet. Going to work now? Yep. 
The broad tube workshop shutters are open, but the shop itself never opens until around 11 or 12. I don't know exactly when. It seems to change with Mr. Braun's mood. That's perfect. There's something we need to talk about. Just what does this crumbly old broad tube workshop need to get ready? Nothing really. So he's paying her to not clean. Something's wrong with that guy. So hear me out then. In other words, she doesn't feel like talking. I glare at her. You would be unwise to anger me. Does it have to be right now? My glare is not very effective. She doesn't falter at all. No one is scared of you. But I maintain my stern expression and nod. Then go ahead. Suzuha shrugs her shoulders as she locks her bicycle. Then she turns to me. But keep it short, okay? Where is the IBN 5100? No intel yet. What? I don't know. Oh. By the way you talked yesterday, it sure sounded like you knew. I know someone who knows. Then take me to them. I won't take no for an answer. Refuse and I'll show you a living hell. I can't. Come on, I even said I'd show you a living hell. Living with you is the hell. I can't introduce you even if I wanted to. What do you mean? Don't tell me they're an imaginary. They've been dead for years. I'm sorry. It's okay. Suzuha pats me on the shoulder. Funny, you'd think I'm the one who's supposed I'm funny, you'd think I'm the one who's supposed to cheer her up. Just then Mr. Braun opens the door and makes his appearance. Hey, part-timer! It's only your third day and you're late? Uh, so, Ritara's fault. Just blame him. Oh, ah, sorry, boss! It's a little this morning. If you're not gonna take this seriously, I can always give you the boot, here. Yeah? As for you, Okabe, don't you lay a finger on my part-timer. Aren't you the lecherous one here, Mr. Braun? Why, you just try saying something like that in front of me. I'll murder you. you gotta keep my honor as a father. I got mail to answer, so let's hurry this up. Besides, I ain't got no use for a skinny kid like her. What was that? Get that back, boss. Susa is actually mad now. Perfect time to check my phone. Who mailed me? That's Ferris again. Doth, doth thou desire chaos? Yeah? I don't like her. She's she's on Okabe's level. What, what you mad? I'm not a kid. I'm a warrior. Ah, what are you talking about? Suzuha's burning passion has the manager shocked. I, on the other hand, am impressed. On impulse, I take Suzuha's hand and grasp it firmly. I like the look in your eyes, you part-time warrior. They shine with the radiance of the beast unseen in modern men. Never forget those eyes of yours. And you shall surely change class from part-time warrior to true warrior. But I'm already a warrior. Stay diligent in your training and you shall have a place at my side on the field of Ragnarok. Ragnarok? The 
this is the wrong country for that. I'm sure there's a Japan-specific end of days you can reference instead of going biking. Suzuha looks confused. What's that? The final battle against CERN. Tell me in if you do, but I've never heard of it. Of course you have it. This is the first time I've revealed it. For I shall be the one to initiate Ragnarok, and the world shall be reborn! Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Wow! You sure are brave, Okabe Rintaro. You'll probably fail, but I like your spirit. I wish my comrades were as spirited as you are. I'm telling you, from the future. Apparently. No, wrong one. Suzuha has comrades. I'd like her to introduce me. This woman, right here. She got comrades. That way I can form my personal army. The Phoenix Crusaders. Wait a sec. Why does she assume I'll fail at Ragnarok? Looks like I need to instill the fear of Yoi and Kyoma into this girl. I'm betting it's because you failed. Why does my store attract nothing but weirdos? Damn. Whatever part time, I just come inside. Get away from this creep. Coming! Later, Okabe Rintaro! Suzuha waves and winks at me as she heads inside the store. Wait up, Okarin! Then my Yuri comes down the stairs, passing Suzuha. So you're going to help me search after all? That's the lab mem spirit! She really is a glutton. It's not even lunchtime yet. So where do you plan to go? We've got the soft map. Katea. I need to brush up my Japanese to read some of these. Animate. There's a ramen store down the block. Mayuri places her finger on her bottom lip in thought as she walks. Sanbo no Sanbo's beefball sounds good. This tiny high school girl truly has guts to enter Sanbo alone. That place isn't like the chain restaurants with their colorful menus and brightly lit interiors. First timers are often cowed by the old school atmosphere. Plus, the clientele is almost exclusively male. But Mayuri doesn't care. She just sits there, shoulder to shoulder with students and salarymen, smiling as she eats her beef bowl. Meanwhile, the Sanbists, regular Sanbo customers, are posting comments online like, The goddess has arrived, or goddess for the win! Hey, shut up, phone. But Sanbo isn't open this early. I try to warn her, but Mayuri is no longer there. She's gone. Mayuri disappears like this every so often. And each time she does, I wonder for one terrible second if she really has vanished from the world. I look around and see Mayuri standing at a distance. She's gazing up at the sky through the buildings. Here we go again. She stopped in the middle of the street so other pedestrians look at her, wondering what she's doing. But she doesn't notice their stares. She slowly reaches out to the sky, as if entranced. And then she freezes in that position. This is one of Mayuri's habits. I call it Stardust Handshake. Mayuri says that she like that she's liked looking at the night sky ever since she was little. 
reason is romantic, or perhaps childish. I feel like I can reach the stars. When I asked her about it one day, she just smiled and gave that answer. At first, she only reached out to the night sky, but lately she's been doing it without regard to the time of day. Like now, even when she's walking and talking with someone, something inside her just seems to switch on. Honestly, it's a little crazy. That's big talk coming from you, Wintaro. It's too early for stars, Mayuri. I walk up to Mayuri and call out to her. She slowly lowers her hand with a blank smile on her face. Did you know? Even during the day, the stars are still up there. Getting philosophical is nice and all, but it's dangerous to stop in the middle of the street. That's true. Oh, just now when I was looking at the stars, I decided to have ramen for lunch today. How are ramen and stars even related? Mayuri's mind works in mysterious ways. I know I said I'd search for the IBN 5100, but I have no idea where to start. I spent about an hour in an internet cafe searching for information, but I turned up nothing. I buy some mango juice with tapioca from a drink from a juice stand inside Yorabashi. I lose myself in thought as I drink it. It's Saturday, so it's starting to get crowded in front of the station. Some maids are distributing leaflets to the people coming out. I know Daru's well acquainted with retro PCs, but is there anyone else? Like maybe a girl who specifically asked you if you knew anything about it? <laughs> oh yeah, Shining Finger was obsessed with the IBN 5100, wasn't she? She's catching on, slowly. I'm really reluctant to contact that male demon, though. Can I? Oh my god, have I been able to do this this entire time? Have I just been fucking this up the whole time? Could I have just opened up the phone any time he mentioned contacting someone and contacted them? I feel so stupid. I don't know Shining Finger's phone number, so I'll just send her an email for the time being. Does that mean some of his fuck-ups are actually my fuck-ups? Two shining figures. Subject, call me. Blah, 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 blah. Once I finish drinking my juice, I aimlessly head towards Chudori. And then comes an email. Maybe she doesn't really like talking on the phone. From Shining Figure. Re, call me. Thanks for the email. I've been waiting. I don't like talking on the phone, so let's exchange emails instead. Moeka. Wait, she wants it by email? There's a lot to cover, so I'd rather not have to type it all out. I need to find out her phone number. Riri, call me. Give me your phone number, along with any information you have on the IBN 5100. And sent. Mail sent. I look up after finishing my email and see a huge crowd of people in front of Radican. Big crowd. I guess the satellite is still a big deal. The media presence hasn't died down since the day of the crash, either. Radicon is still closed. Um, and, of course, the satellite is still there. Not 30 seconds pass before I get a reply. Right as I'm about to look down and read the email, I catch sight of a familiar face in the crowd. Oh. I... I don't think she wants to see you. Well, if it isn't my assistant, what are you doing here? Hey, when did I become your assistant? She looks like she'll snap at me, so to dampen her spirit, I go back to checking my email. Re, 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 call me! I don't have anything! How about you, Moeka? What is wrong with this woman? I told her to tell her me her phone number, and she just ignored me. She doesn't even have any information! How useless can you be? About as useless as you are. Why are you glaring at me? 
Don't worry about it. You're not the cause of my frustration. Oh, so you're just raging? Don't glare at me. You've glared at me before, haven't you? Yes, for completely justified reasons, pervert. That's because you keep doing pervy. No, I'm not saying anything. Another one? Tell me the Super Hakka's address! Moeka! I want to snap my I want to snap my phone in half and throw it on the ground. What do you mean, tell me the Super Hakka's address? You're making fun of me with that musical note. You're not getting anything from me. Anyway, why does she need to send me two short consecutive emails? I mean, she might as well just combine them into one. Are the emails you're getting really that unpleasant? They're more unreasonable than unpleasant. I can't quite describe it in one word. Stop sending me all these short emails! I'm begging you, just gather your thoughts and send everything together. I feel a little satisfied after sending that email. Oh, no, I can't close my phone just yet. I turn to Kurisu again. So... Christina. Christina. What brings you here? Still not her name. Could you at least be consistent? Anyway, my business here doesn't concern you. Why are you pouting? I'm not pouting. I just don't want to get involved with your silly business. Nonsense. You're already a lab, ma'am. You have a duty to work for the benefit of the lab. Well, she is only a temporary member. No... It's because she's a temporary member that we need to get as much out of her as we can. That's the I regret losing myself to curiosity back then. Karisu sighs and looks up at the satellite. We're not alone. Several other people are standing here and looking up. It's Akiba's latest tourist attraction. Did you come to see the satellite? I guess. It doesn't make sense. Normally they calculate satellites' orbits so that they burn up in, in the atmosphere when they fall. So how can that thing be in such perfect condition? And that's to say nothing about the huge hole it punched in the building. Are satellites that durable? Where's the satellite from, anyway? They still don't know. Rumors say it's from the former Soviet Union, but Russia denies it. So it looks like they can't remove it yet. Three days have passed and it's still unknown. How interesting. That's because it's not a satellite, it's a time machine! I smell a conspiracy. So it's another organization cover-up. They knew I'd be at Radikan and tried to erase me. I doubt they were even looking for you. Organization? What's that? The organization is the organization. Its formal name is something else, but all those who know of its existence call the organization out of fear. They rule the world from the shadows, transcending nations with politics, economics, religion, even science in their clutches. That's obviously a crackpot conspiracy. Thank you very much. Kadisu hangs her head and blushes for some reason. What's wrong? Nothing! Really nothing, okay? Say it with a word and I hate you. Thank you very much in relation to you. I wonder if she's afraid that she is gonna give herself up as being that person on at channel. Because I'm pretty sure she is that other person on at, on, uh, at channel. The Kamehameha person. Crazy 
ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
What do you mean? I hate people who play with their phones in the middle of a conversation. Uh, so that's why you grabbed my phone when we first met. When we first met? I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. There I was, giving my report, when you grabbed my... ...phone out of my hand. I shut my mouth before I finish. The events at Radican. My story of what happened back then doesn't mesh with Daru's story. It didn't mesh with Mayuri's, and now it won't mesh with Karisu's. So in the end, was that a dream? A hallucination? What? What do you mean, giving your report? N no, it's nothing. So about the phone wave name subject to change. After the experiment, you screamed something like a time machine, it can't be. Did something awaken a past trauma? No, and don't go making one up either. So. Back when she was five years old, Christina was on the plains of Arkansas when lightning... I wasn't hit by lightning, and I was still living in Japan when I was five. And why Arkansas? I was trying to imagine tranquil scenery, and the first state that came to mind was Arkansas. Second was Oregon. Not Utah? I mean, relatively speaking, isn't Utah more suitable? Then answer me, Christina. Why did you freak out back then? For no reason. I simply didn't want to believe fringe science should stay in the realm of fiction. Fringe science? Don't be ridiculous. You saw it with your own eyes. You saw the email leap to the past. You saw the banana travel instantly through space. I saw... But we must be missing something. Or maybe we're just seeing what we want to see. Remember what I said at ATF? Time machines are just a pipe dream given modern technology. And yet a bunch of amateurs like you just stick a phone and a microwave together and expect time travel to occur? Ridiculous. But it did occur. Will you deny what you saw with your own eyes? Are you saying that theories trump reality? And then I hope you enjoy sophistry and word games because that's all you'll ever have. What do you mean word games? Quantum theory, for example. If you ask me, theories like that are nothing but word games. Oh, wait, are you rejecting modern physics? Who do you think you are? Trust what you see. The only things that matter are things that happen, things that don't happen, things that aren't observed, are just hypotheses. Hypotheses. When hypotheses pile up and theories are verified, they become reality. That's how modern physics comes to understand the truth of the universe. But sometimes your hypotheses are mistaken. Even Einstein was wrong about some things. So, you're going to do nothing, just because you could be wrong? Then enjoy your dirty little lab and your silly gadgets, because that's all you'll ever have. You'll never reach the truth that way. Failure teaches success. I see. Nice rebuttal. You're never getting off your high horse, are you? By the way, Christina, I have always felt that physicists are hypocrites. You're a hypocrite! Everything you do is hypocritical! What? There are phenomena that everyone knows occur in reality, but which physicists refuse to research. What do you think about that? I don't know what to say unless you can give me some examples. Ghosts, for instance. The occult? Really? You refuse to research it just because it's the occult? That contradicts what you just said. You'll never reach the truth that way. People have seen ghosts. There's even photographic evidence. So where are the theories? Why do physicists refuse to speak? 
It's a different field of study. You can't call physics the study of natural phenomena and then decide th some things don't count. You are being so ridiculous. First of all, one, a lot of pictures, even as someone who wants to believe in ghosts and thinks ghosts are cool, a lot of pictures of ghosts are disproven as things like dust in the lens, of light from other sources, like... You can't just say, oh, you don't believe in ghosts. They're pictures of ghosts. You can't say there's not ghosts. You are placing the burden of proof on her when this is, first of all, it's not something she's even researched. And second of all, nothing related to what you're doing. Can you prove ghosts are real? True, but... Do you? And that's why we must investigate the phenomenon of sending emails to the past. You shall assist me. No. Kurisu gives me a clear-cut answer. Sometimes that's what you need. Along with her usual glare. Also something you need. So the genius girl really does hate me. I hate you. I won't have a hand in your fringe science. I won't make the same mistake my father did. Ooh! An interesting plot development. Your father? You make a fine argument, but it won't work in the scientific community. The day you decide to research time travel is the day you're out of a job. How can you be so certain? Because that's what happened to my father. Kurisu grimaces. And as we delve into the past of our mysterious red-headed genius girl, I think it's time to call it for this episode before I manage to break something else. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, it is definitely going to be late getting out because of all the technical difficulties and all the real life stuff that happens, but thank you for sticking through it with me. Uh, if you guys like the video, feel free to leave a like. It helps my channel grow. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe. I make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, apparently. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye!